Okay. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you Hello, for joining everybody. us. It is um, our 10th buyer webinar uh, here at Summit Real Estate, and we are so excited about that. And um, we are so excited about the special guests that are joining us today for our 10th webinar topic, uh, which is how can I break even on my second home or investment property? It's a question that as real estate brokers, we get asked all the time, uh, can I make money? What are my what are my options? What do I need to look at from the financing perspective and the rental perspective? Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, are you able to break even? Cash flow, offset costs. Uh, we're going to be discussing all of those things today. Uh, feel free to direct message us or put in the comments uh, your name and contact info so we can keep you posted on what's happening with the Summit County real estate market. And then at the end of this webinar, we're going to be doing a drawing uh, for a $40 Amazon gift card. Um, or if you would like, if you're local and you would like a local gift card, we would love to do that also. Uh, but you don't have to be local. So that's why we went with Amazon. Um, my name is Keely Gray uh, with Summit Real Estate and my team members will introduce themselves. Hi there, I'm Trisha Moore. Hi, I'm Dina Hepner. Hi there, I'm Isabel Rawson. Hi ladies, thank you for joining us today. And uh, our special, very, very special guests, um, Jennifer Cleary with Bank BOK Financial Mortgage. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, you are a mortgage banker. Correct? Yes. Okay. And um, Mary Waldman and Ann Brooks uh, with Summit Mountain Rentals. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. Hi, right, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. We look forward to chatting with you today about all things um, real estate and lending and renting. Fun topics. So, first, we're going to um, take a look at a specific property. Dina. Yeah, our featured property is, list price is six ninety nine. Um, it is currently under contract right now. Just a note. Um, it's a two bedroom, two bath, Lake Forest. It's located in Frisco, just right across the street from Lake Dillon. It has beautiful Lake Dillon views. And um, you can walk across the street to the walking path or bike path, and that will take you anywhere um, in Frisco, the marina, Main Street, whatnot, in just, just a minute. The, the property um, HOA dues are $446 a month, and that's all inclusive gas and heat, except for gas and electric. Um, annual taxes are eight fifty nine thirty. dollars um, There is a 1% transfer tax due at closing. This is a one-time fee negotiable between buyer and seller. Um, it comes fully furnished. It has a washer and dryer in the units, and the complex itself offers hot tubs. It is also very close to the summit stage. And that is everything about the property. Jen, Jen, are you okay with starting us off? Um, we're curious, sure. what about this property uh, do you see right off the bat? Um, when we send these MLS sheets over to you and we say, here, here it is, this is what our buyers are interested in, what, what stands out to you? And that's what I wanna see because I need to know what the HOA dues are, um, if there is a transfer tax, what the taxes are, because all that gets factored into the qualifying ratio to help the buyer you know, afford the property. Um, and I usually start off the conversation by asking them if it's going to be a second home for them or if it's going to be their primary residence, because that'll help determine um, down payment requirements and the interest rate. Um, so, for example, if the second homeowner put 20% down, that would be a loan amount of $559,200. The interest rate today would be 3%, and the total payment would be right around $3,000. 2991 a month. 
Now, if they put 25% down, the interest rate is reduced by a quarter. So it'll go down to two and three quarters. And um, the total payment would be 2,774. So putting that extra 5% down really helps with the payment and the interest rate. I didn't know that, that that extra 5% from 20 to 25 um, can make such a big difference. Does every incremental 5% change the interest rate or how does that work? That's a good question. No, it does not always go in increments of five. Um, the next huge break in interest rate is if you put 40% down and that would lower your rate to two and five eight. So it'll just be an eight less, um, but you would have to put a lot more money down at 40% down. Interesting. Yeah. And, um, and Jen, did you already mention this? Is that, so that was on a condo only, correct? Correct. Um, Single family homes, the interest rate may be a little bit lower because there is a slight adjustment for the condominium factor. Okay. Is there one the other easier or harder to lend on? Um, I wouldn't say it's harder or easier. There's more documentation required for a condominium. For example, we have to get a um, HOA questionnaire filled out by the HOA that does increase the closing costs a little bit because um, that fee is anywhere from $75 to $300, depending on what HOA manages the property. On a single family home, obviously, we don't have to get that. Um, you know, we do look at the budget, review um, the income and everything that the reserves that the HOA has. So there's more review and documentation that we look at in a condo. Um, but I'd say 80% of my business is condominium. So we're just completely used to looking at all that paperwork. <laughs> it's just par for the course up here. Daily life, yep. <laughs> yep. And I was going to say, Jen, you've recently, uh, Jennifer recently assisted me with um, the purchase of my primary home. And so um, it was kind of interesting with um, COVID happening this year, um, the documentation that was required. Do you want to share a little bit about what that has looked like or what changes you may have seen with what's required for your buyers? Absolutely. COVID has changed the way that we analyze or look at income. Um, you know, the good old days, we used to just look at the tax return, W-2s. Um, but now for self-employed borrowers, we are having to look at their year-to-date income. So we're asking for a 2020 P&L. We're also asking for three months of business bank statements to show deposits and activity going into the account. Um, and then we're also analyzing the line of work that you're in. You know, if you are a realtor that's been great because everybody's been really busy right now but you know unfortunately if you're a, a waitress you don't have that tip income coming in so we do have to look and see if the 2020 income is in line with the 2019 income that was reported on the tax returns um w-2 clients are a little bit easier because their income is typically you know pretty steady um but again they may have been furloughed in march and april so we have to verify that they are back to work full time now so COVID has definitely changed the way that we look at income. Well, I know I was super appreciative of having you guide me through everything. <laughs> it's um, more paperwork. <laughs> okay, what else from the um, lending perspective? Did you have a question, Isabel? No, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure if we were. Yeah. You know, there's um, a couple other little things that we look at in condominiums. You know, we don't want to see a lot of commercial space in the building. Uh, we don't want to see anything with like a front desk. We, we, we like to stay away from the properties that seem to be managed like a hotel. So most of our condos up here are warrantable and eligible for conventional financing. But there are a handful um, that are that fall into that condo tell category. Um, and that does make it ineligible for conforming financing. And that is why we recommend a local lender because you guys know exactly which complexes this might follow under, the condo hotel might fall under. Right off the bat. Exactly, exactly. We know we know which ones we can and cannot do. <laughs> right. We're very gonna have a first right of refusal or if they're going to have, you know, any sort of um, hiccup that we might run into. It's just lovely to know that you know these complexes like the back of your hand. Yes, um, I do. And we, we know which ones are in litigation, so we know which ones are having issues with the HOA that could um, be a problem with lending. So it definitely does benefit you to work with somebody who's familiar with some kind of properties. For sure. For sure. 
Um, Isabel. Great. Um, so now that we've kind of chatted about the finances, um, let's see if we could offset some of these expenses with some rental potential. Um, Mary and Anne, can you uh, give us some insight into that? Absolutely. Thanks for this opportunity to be part of your webinar. I think it's very cool uh, to choose the product and to go into these specifics. So Ann and I um, are part of the business development team at Summit Mountain Rentals. We are Summit County's vacation rental experts with premier properties in Frisco and Breckenridge. Um, uh, uh, I think that uh, we, uh, we prepared a rental projection flyer here that we will review with you. Yeah, and uh, we really, we do spend a lot of time speaking with buyers about the vacation rental market up here, um, which properties are good rentals, um, and all that goes into making a rental successful. And we have the top of our, our rental projection right here, um, and it kind of shows the booking trends and the most popular configurations in Breckenridge and Frisco. Currently, the most popular configuration for rentals is a two bedroom and two bathroom. Um, and we, we try and educate our, the buyers who come to us about when to expect income. We really say it's, it's a very seasonal market up here. So you expect about 75 to 80% of your income in winter. And that's really from Thanksgiving until ski season's over, about mid-April. And then really about 20, 25% in the summer. So it's very seasonal. And we do have a chart on there that shows the booking trends, occupancy trends as well. We also like to educate buyers on what really drives rental demand. We say there's three factors. First is location. So anything close to Main Street, close to the ski slopes, on a bus route, really make a, a rental appealing. The second thing is occupancy. So it, depending on where you're buying, each area has a different occupancy restrictions. For Frisco, you are allowed to sleep two people per bedroom plus an additional four. So if you purchase a two bedroom property, you are allowed to sleep up to, up to eight people in that condo. And we really recommend maximizing that occupancy just because it brings you up in more online searches. You're just more visible to renters looking for properties. And then the third thing that really drives rental demand is how nice it is, the amenities, um, so this property has a great view of the lake. Um, it's got shared hot tubs. Um, and if properties photograph well, that's also a big draw for renters. So this walks into this property. Um, the Lake Forest two bedroom, two bath. Um, it's a beautiful building. It is the last um, construction complex um, before you uh, pass, um, uh, proceed on that Dillon Dam Road um, into Lake, uh, uh, over to Dam Road. Um, but it just underwent a beautiful exterior remodel. Uh, it looks very modern. The HOA did a fabulous job. And so this particular buyer doesn't have to deal with any of the assessments. Um, we actually was approached by a buyer yesterday who is under contract with us, so it was very timely. Uh, as Anne mentioned, two bedroom, two bath is the most popular configuration in a condominium. It's just an easy starter um, entry level for a second home owner. Not a lot to um, to do to to manage exterior, having a, a well run HOA. Um, and two bedroom is very ideal for families. Uh, we are a very family driven destination here in Summit County. So typically for a two bedroom, you'll have a, you know, a one large family or potentially two small families sharing uh, um, here in the mountains. So we had projected $30,000 gross rental income uh, for this property. That dollar amount is actually the raw rent that we would be splitting with the homeowner. Um, the guest will pay the extra taxes, that's the Frisco town taxes and the state taxes and any lodging taxes. We collect all that and take care of it and process it for you, and plus the cleaning fee. The, um, uh, what's so beautiful about this property is that uh, it has great phones. Again, location, 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 as I mentioned. The views of Lake Dillon is amazing. Uh, being able to get up in the morning and watch the sunrise come over the lake, I mean, I think that would be priceless. 
We currently manage four other properties in Lake Forest Condo, so very familiar um, with how the rental demand um, is driven on this particular location, because everything really is dependent on location and occupancy, um, and have a very good uh, rental history. Uh, I would also like to say that, um, you know, with COVID, uh, a lot of people are looking for some place to escape. Um, and having a second home uh, with an amazing view, I think is a huge benefit as a future investment. Absolutely, absolutely. So Mary, I have a question. Um, as Jen mentioned earlier, putting down different percentages um, on, for your down payment, 20 versus 25%. Say a client wants to save that extra chunk and put it into the unit. Um, is there anything that could potentially increase rentability on this property or generate more income? If they were to fix up the inside. That's a very good question. And we see this quite a bit now. Um, I know that the inventory is quite low uh, but at the same time, a lot of properties that are coming up, uh, quite frankly, I think that the property can uh, use, use a little bit of an uplift um, in terms of furnishings, the kitchens, and the bathrooms, the fireplace, they are all original. The flooring is very nice. That is a definite upgrade from the originals that, uh, believe me, we've been in this condo for 15 years, complex, uh, so a lot of different uh, varying degrees of quality. So. Um, a buyer, and, and it really is a personal choice. Uh, we say that, you know, make the place as your own private home, and whatever you enjoy, the guests will also appreciate. So, you know, when we come to a buyer, they always want to make some changes, you know, to make it their own. So it could be as simple um, as just changing out the bedding in a property um, could actually give it a huge uplift. Um, just cosmetic changes, um, pictures, just painting, without having to go into the huge investment of you know, remodeling the bathroom, which can be quite prohibitive. But as Isabel mentioned, it can be, again, a, 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 a trade-off. Do I put more down to reduce my monthly outlay, or would I save that um, dollars and put into a potential remodel of a property so that I can make it um, to the condition that I, I would want. So we manage a lot of properties, of over 50 properties here in Frisco and almost 200 in Breckenridge in all various range of quality. And we've seen the good economy, in, and especially I think with COVID, people feel privileged to having to take a vacation and they want to stay in a nice place. So given all things being equal in the same complex, if you have a two bedroom, two bath that has been remodeled, updated, new furnishings, uh, people are willing to pay an extra $50 a night or $100 a night. So you will recoup whatever amount that you may reinvest into the property in a potential rental income. Plus you get to enjoy it when you're here because it's exactly how you would like to use it. Very good point, very good point. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer, you know, speaking of um, saving money, uh, putting it towards the down payment or potentially putting it towards reinvesting in the property, uh, you're able to kind of help do some financial planning in a sort of way. Like your cash that you have will be best used towards the down payment, or maybe you should pay down the student loan or pay this off. Regardless, don't go out and buy a new vehicle or <laughs> a bunch of furniture before we close. Before we close. <laughs> Absolutely. No, you know, once I see the whole picture, yeah, we can go over all sorts of different ideas because that student loan interest rate may be really high, like a lot of them are. So if they've got the cash, it might benefit them to pay off that student loan. So yeah, definitely we can go over different options, what is best to do with their cash. Mm -hmm. Great. I think that's a huge, um, huge advantage of having a relationship with your lender um, is really just getting to at the bottom and the nitty gritty of what your goals are, not just with this property, but you know, your whole real estate portfolio and you know, the future. So it's nice that you can be a part of that and help really guide people in the right direction. Absolutely, absolutely. It's part of my job. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Mary and Ann, going back to uh, the rental projections on this particular property, um, what are the management fees? What does that 
look like for your services? Yep, absolutely. We are a premier property management service. We are not a low cost uh, national, national chain that you might come across in this competitive market. We've been voted the best property management company uh, 11 times out of the last 12 years. Thank you. Um, because we have invested um, in the infrastructure, property management is all about details. Um, you need eyes on the property, feet on the ground. And as my husband likes to say, technology can't unclog a toilet. <laughs> answer the call overnight, toilet flooding, clogging, you know, you can anything you can imagine happening in your home, it will happen and more so because these are strangers coming into a brand new property that they don't know. So if you imagine, hey, you have friends and family come visit you who don't know your property every weekend, well, you know, things happen. But this is why you need a reliable and professional uh, local partner. And I'm happy to say that 99% of the buyers that Ann and I speak to these days, um, they want, they feel strongly about working with a local agent. Um, certainly, it's their do, you know, it's their job to know what everything that is out there to make the best informed decision. So they will come across national companies and bigger corporations. But at the same time, their personal motivations, you know, I would rather <clears throat> I would rather pay a little bit more to have work with a local company and get the type of service that I need and really for that peace of mind. Because many of our homeowners are 2,000 miles away, right, or, or, or even farther, international homeowners. So, so we have uh, over 35 full-time staff that answers phones 24-7, on-call maintenance, field engineers, inspections after every departure, we take care of the trash. Um, any projects you might want to deal with, and of course, dedicated marketing team to get that extra, or eat out is what I say, that extra 10, 15% out of your own rental property. Our management fee ranges from 20 to 40%. In this particular case, in Frisco, with a late view, we would say it would be 35%, so that if we were to gross $30,000 rent, and that does assume that it is available to us 365 days. Um, while there is no owner restrictions, owner has the first right. This is your property. You use the dates that you want to use any time of the year. Uh, but on those dates that are open to us, then you know we have no idea what your plans are. So it may fluctuate from year over year, season to season. So our projection is based on assuming it's available. And then um, if we were to rent it 365 days and all available, then your net is up just around $20,000 after management fee. Good, thank you. What does the range, 20% to 40%, what does that, tell us more about that. Well, good question. Um, well, it depends on a lot of factors. Okay. Um, the uh, uh, rental projection, certainly the ability for a property to generate, what kind of income can I expect? Um, we also take into consideration how much owner use. We do have uh, many homeowners from, you know, the sunny, sunny states, Florida, Texas, Arizona. Uh, you know, they, they don't want to be there in the summertime, and they would rather spend July, August, September, right, here, so that we, we would use um, that rental uh, dates, available dates. Um, but at the same time, as Ann mentioned, we are primarily still, still a rental destination. About 75 to 80 percent of our income is earned in the winter time. So, owner wants to use it in the summertime, retired or kids on vacation, no problem at all. So that range again is uh, potential of the property, the owner use, and I think it also goes to the you know we are a very personal business. Um, you know this is why we're here in front of you. Uh, we know every single homeowner is very you know very personally in that uh, we know what their needs are. And we customize our management proposal based on, hey, my primary interest is in income. My primary interest, actually, you know, I would like to have some income to expend, you know, set off expenses, but I'm more concerned that, hey, I'm too far away. I'm spent, I'm about to spend seven hundred thousand dollars on this condo, cost more than my own house in, in Ohio, mm -hmm. and I would like someone to be available to keep an eye on it. And that peace of mind. Uh, I would say is a, is a very common balance they would like to do. Hey, I want someone to take care of my house, but I also want to earn some income. That 
balanced with, hey, I also need to use it, right? This is not a rental income property for financial purposes. So all that put in the play is how we come up with a reasonable management fee. We feel to be competitive, uh, allows us to be successful, but also addressing what the homeowner needs. Fantastic, thank you. Um, how has how has COVID um, changed things in the lending world, Jennifer? Um, really, just like I mentioned before, just about the income. Um, you know, self employment, um, self employed borrowers were having to just get a lot more documentation um, to document that their income is steady compared to what it was in 2019. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, some people have struggled this year and their income has not been where it was in 2019. And it's just like, um, COVID, we didn't have to do any of that. We just looked at the tax returns. So it's definitely changed the way we look at it. Okay. And yeah, from I the management perspective, go ahead, Trish. Oh no, I was just gonna say um, a lot of impacts, but I, I was kind of curious about um, the kind of buyers that you're seeing, Jen, versus, um, I mean, I know you work, is it, would you say you work primarily with second homeowners or? I do, but I've, dynamics are changing for sure. Um, people are moving to Summit County now because their offices in New York or San Francisco, wherever are closing and their management is telling them that they can work from home. So they're getting out of the, hustle bustle of the city and they're moving to the mountains. So I'm definitely doing a doing more owner occupied type loans than I typically do. Um, and they're young people. I want to say they're early thirties, you know, late twenties that are mo moving here and purchasing a first, first home, their first time home buyers. A lot of them are, and um, they're just working from home. It's different. And I'm sure, I'm sure it's not just, home buyers I'm sure it's also rental renters as well that are flocking to the mountains getting away from the city so are you are you ladies seeing that as well yeah no absolutely uh, we've really seen a trend in longer stays which is yeah. kind of the things especially this summer and fall have been the busiest we've had in a while as far as <laughs> rentals people I think we have called a pent-up demand for travel so they're, they're tired of being stuck at home. So since they can work remotely or their kids are in school remotely, they're staying up here for longer extended periods. Right. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing um, owners who have invested in, in, uh, in these second homes to also spend more time here that they, than they would have normally have done. Mm -hmm. And because you're only earning about 20, 25% income in the summertime, it's completely worthwhile for them to you know, get away from their cities and the, the ability to have a second home that they can escape to um, when they want to is a huge So these are intangible benefits that I know that it's difficult when a buyer is just looking at the dollars and cents. But there's a lot of emotional and personal satisfaction of coming and having uh, a second home here. Um, so I strongly encourage it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you want to offset expenses, do rent it. <laughs> so a whole team here key players in um, your real estate portfolio, right? Um, hopefully we always start with Jen Cleary in the um, lending perspective, <laughs> qualified knowing what you can afford um, is huge. And then looking at properties with us um, at Summit Real Estate and just learning about the different areas and what your money can buy do you want a single family home? Do you want a condominium complex that's lock and leave, but maybe you have higher dues? That's how we come in uh, to play with um, this process and the decisions that are made. And uh, sometimes we find that buyers, the, if the rental aspect is very important to them, um, then we'll have them call Mary uh, and Ann before they make an offer on a property. Mm -hmm. sure. that's their area of expertise and um we're happy to point people in the right direction and it truly is teamwork 
right? Yeah. When you come into play may vary, but we sure are happy that you are part of our, our team because it is um, a lot of pieces to the puzzle. And when someone comes to us with a, what do you think, is this going to work? It's like, well, we might need to map some things out and we have some great people that can help us do that. Yes, definitely. Yeah, thank you ladies for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you, it was a pleasure. It was very fun. Yeah, good. Our goal here with these webinars is just to provide valuable information and let people know that we're here to help and we're happy to help. We love what we do. And I think, um, Jen, Mary, and Ann, it's obvious that you love what you do as well and um, have fun doing it, right? Absolutely. Go do it. <laughs> yes. Right. So we will, put, um, we will uh, attach some of the rental information uh, from Summit Mountain Rentals. Um, you know, the indicated a slide that I showed earlier indicated what the most popular property types are, the two bedroom, two bath. Um, what the restrictions are as far as short-term rentals go in each area and um, how many people you can sleep in a particular property, things like that, right? We'll get you that information. And uh, don't forget to DM or comment with your contact info and be entered into the drawing to win a $40 gift card. Um, if you're local, we will make it to the local destination of your choice because we always want to support local and all of us here are locals local organizations. <laughs> thank you we'll also share all of their information as well so right absolutely okay wonderful thank you ladies so much for your time and your information you. and your good energy and um let it snow right oh, let, yeah. it snow. <laughs> let it snow Take care. Thank Have you. a great day. Bye. 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 Thanks.